Hi, my name is Lisa Meyerhofer. I play principal flute at Opera in the Ozarks. During the year, I'm also assistant principal flute and piccolo with the Omaha Symphony and principal flute of the Des Moines Symphony. Today, I'm going to be showing you some tips for working on your Allstate music for this year, and I hope this helps you in your practicing. Enjoy. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Curler Etude on page 23 of your Selective Studies book. It's marked Alleg Allegretto Agitato, so agitated <laughs> and quick. I would recommend somewhere around the quarter, dotted quarter note is 54 to 60. You could go faster if you'd like. You might have to go into double tonguing if you go faster. But this is a good speed that shows some energy without going too crazy. So you still have some of all the character that's built into this piece, which is what I'll talk about. Um, a lot of that is in the dynamics. There's a lot of piano and a lot of forte. So make it really dramatic with the dynamics. Um, one of the terminologies in here, martellato, right at the beginning there, that means hammered. So whenever you have the staccato, it's like aggressive staccato. Um, really stark contrast to the slurs that you have throughout. And then you also have accents all over too. And I'm going to demonstrate this because even in the first eight measures, you've got all three. So let's hear the difference between all of those. So very dramatic for sure. Um, plan your breaths throughout this as well. Uh, especially I would recommend breathing right after the eighth note in measure 33 and the eighth note in measure 40. Um, you want to make sure you can get through each of these phrases. And I also recommend breathing right before you take the DC alcoda right to the beginning. Use the relentando there, the slow down to make the breath make more sense. So you don't just take a breath and then crash into the beginning again. So I'll start a few measures before that. And then it's suspenseful that way. Um, also throughout the etude, I've, I recommend using your B-flat thumb key as much as possible, especially, uh, hopefully you're used to using it, but if not, this is a great way to start using it and um, get used to it. Um, and there might be a couple spots where you need to move it, but it's pretty straightforward. You switch back when you're done. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Karg Ehlert Etude in B major. It's on page 42 in your Selected Studies book. And this is marked in Tempo di Walzer. Obviously, that looks like the word waltz. So yes, we're talking about waltz here. It's almost in one, but think more of it in three with like a one feel so you don't rush and tumble out of control as this goes on. I'm going to give you a few definitions in case you're unaware of some of these. Um, grazioso, graceful. So, light, graceful, um, morbido, actually it looks like the word morbid, but it means more like soft, which it is, it says piano there, so soft and delicate, I think, um, and scherzoso, towards the end there, uh, means bouncy, light, joking, that sort of thing, so there's a lot of personality in this etude, I actually kind of think of it as a quirky waltz. Especially because it takes a little while to figure out the melody and where all these notes are going in this. Like, the tonality is weird. <laughs> but the more you play it and work through it, it'll kind of start to click in your head and it'll make more sense as a whole piece instead of little fragments. Um, 
the one thing I'm really going to talk about in this etude is planning your use of B flat thumb key, your traditional one and one B flat, and the lever key. Um, so if you're someone who's pretty much just used to using one and one, I definitely recommend trying these other ways now. So your B flat thumb key, if any of you aren't aware or just aren't really that comfortable with it, it's you can leave it down almost all the time, except when you need B natural, of course, um, or high F sharp. So you gotta be careful with that. Um, but you can use it in a lot of this etude. No, you're not in a key with flats, but you've got a lot of A sharps. So sometimes the thumb key is really useful. Um, the lever key, if you're not as used to using that, you might not have this key, so you can ignore that. But this key here, the A sharp B flat lever, you hold it down or you nudge it with the side of your finger, just like if you're using this key. But if you notice, this key here doesn't go down when you use the lever. So this means you can hold the lever down and still play some other notes with your left hand without any weird sounds coming out, like it doesn't change the pitches. So that might sound a little tricky to use, and it takes some getting used to. Um, but there's some spots in this etude where it's worth a shot. So I'm going to give you some examples here. So let's look at measure 4 through 10 first. Um, I'll just tell you, starting in measure 4, I'm using the lever at first, so the A sharps. It's really good when you go back and forth between A sharp and B. Just because you don't have to, you can be a little lazier with it. Um, right after that, the end of measure four, I switch to my thumb key, and I leave it on until the middle of measure five. Measure six, I use one and one B flat. That was kind of a personal choice. Uh, some of these are up to you. It depends on what note comes next. It depends on what you're comfortable with. So I'm just making some suggestions here. And let's see, measure eight, I use the lever. And then eventually I switch back to the thumb key. So I'll mention that in a little bit, but let me demonstrate that whole section. And hopefully you can see, you won't be able to see my thumb really easily, but you'll get to see the lever and the one and one. Actually, yep, there I was using the thumb key. It's harder to start right in the middle there. So I used all three somewhere along the line there. Um, moving ahead, let's see, I was going to show measure 12 and 13. To measure 12, I used the one and one for the A sharp there. And measure 13, I use the thumb key. Um, that's kind of easy to do to switch to the thumb key because you have a C sharp, so you're not using your thumb. So you can easily get over to the thumb key without being clumsy and sliding over. So. So, easy switch back and forth. That's one of the ways you can make your decisions. Um, I'm going to show you the notation that I use when I use a B-flat thumb key. I have brackets. So, this one would mean put the thumb key on, and this one would mean take it off. And anything in between the brackets is when you're having your B-flat thumb key down. I don't have a fancy notation for one and one. I literally just write one plus one. And B flat lever, I just write lever. Because you're not going to leave it on forever like you do with the B flat thumb key. Um, another example would be 16 and 17. Um, there I use 1 and 1 in 16, and then I switch to the lever at the end. Um, and then I'll show you from 36 to the end. I use a variety of things here. So, beginning of measure 36, you can't use your thumb key because of the F sharps. But then right after that, you can do a couple beats with the thumb key. Take it off, use the lever in the next measure. Measure 38, thumb key back on. Then off for 39, then on for 40, and then off for the end. Seems tedious, you might have to figure it out a little bit, but in the long run, it's a lot easier. It gives you the ability to play gracefully. So from the end, nice and slow, hopefully you can see some of this. up with your normal thumb key. Um, so hopefully this
this gives you some ideas to think about. You have to put in a little work to do this if you're not already used to doing it, but I highly recommend it, especially because it's such a quirky little etude. So the more you can do to figure out the, the technical stuff will make it more enjoyable in the end once you play straight through it. I hope you found some or all of these thoughts to be helpful as you're working on your music. Best of luck, have fun, and thanks for watching.